Scotland's Southwest Coastal 300, Episode 3. Uh, the following morning, we're leaving the visitor centre car park. Had an excellent night's sleep, and now, in the rain and the mist, we're headed to a place called Black Lock, where we might, might stay tonight, but if we don't like the look of it. We're going to go on somewhere else. Well, we're travelling back the way we came off the main road. And so we're going to be faced with that very, very steep hill. But this time going down it and it's wet. Well, this is a, a one in five hill down. So take it nice and steady. I'm in first gear and I'm just touching the brakes occasionally because I don't want to start sliding down here. And we've made it with all safety at the bottom. Oh, all clear. Come on, let's go. We just passed a sign saying this is the gateway to the Galloway Forests. Uh, I'm not being sponsored for this and I'm not being paid for it in any way whatsoever. But I really, really appreciate having this EcoFlow 500 watt um, power pack, uh, which at the moment is charging off the cigarette lighter and it's now up to 60%. When we set off this morning it was down to 55% um, and I couldn't manage without it. I couldn't do all the editing and go on the internet and check banks and things like that um, as much as I do without that and I, it charges if I've got mains electricity, it will charge up in about an hour to an hour and a half, even for flat, um, with the 12 volt going in. I think I've got about 100 watts going in at the moment. And I've also got solar panels uh, behind my seat here. <laughs> not very good today, not very useful today. But I have used them, and although they're, they're, they're not expensive ones, they're comparatively cheap. And they're supposed to do 120 watts, but you need some really, really bright sunshine for that. And uh, with medium sunshine, I've had 60, 70 watts going in, no trouble. And when the sun comes out from behind the clouds, um, it can get up to occasionally to about 90, 95. So it's been a boom and I wouldn't be without it now. Because I could have it on the floor, um, which is where I normally have it, but today I wanted to see, I wanted to be able to push the little button and see how much more I was getting charged because we're going to be sort of semi wild camping again tonight and I've got a lot of editing to do. I want to make sure that it's uh, as powerful as, as possible. I've got it on the seat, but I've got the seat uh, belt on it. Well, apparently, Mandy's uh, decided to turn around. Turned out she'd seen a waterfall. Wanted to go back and get some photographs. All oh, right, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll wait here. But I had to stop because I saw this beautiful river. Look at that. And at the top of it, the grey mare's tail. I'll have a quick wander up. There we are. If I can get up to that wall, I might get a better shot. It's not a steep climb, it's just... It's just really, really wet. The rain's coming down quite heavily at the minute. But there we are. Look at that! In the Scottish lowlands. How beautiful is that? In the Galloway Forest. 
That's wonderful. Right, short and sweet, back to the car. We've been climbing a little bit and there's, uh, there's snow, a dusting of snow on the mountains over there. Well, not exactly mountains, hills. It's got about one and a half miles to go. To. And this, this is Blacklock Car Park <laughs> with a pothole, big, big pothole. And if I thought that was bad, <laughs> wait till you see what came up. Well, Mandy, you certainly take us to some strange places. <laughs> Look. Oh dear, oh dear. Never mind. Sure it'll be fun when we get there. Oh, this bit has got a load of potholes in it. <laughs> Absolutely dreadful. And this is it. Black Lock Car Park. I don't think we'll be stopping here the night. No, all right. Well, I was worried if some of those stones were really sharp. I yeah. Okay, I'll tell you. So, as you've probably gathered there, we've uh, we look, we decided we're not going to stop the night here um, because there's no view of the lock, and we're going to go to another lock, um, which. Apparently it's pretty, very beautiful, but you can't stop the night there. So I thought we were going to have a, a day of doing nothing, going nowhere, a chill out day. But it would appear that we're going to have to do a lot more driving than I thought. Not all that much, but enough. Well, that's, that's an interesting looking hill in front of us. An inspiration for artists, no doubt. The stone showing through. Very pretty. And of course in the summertime the brown will probably be green. A raging little river down there. Obviously coming from Black Lock. And here it is, Loch Clattering Shores. It's actually a reservoir um, that we stopped here for a hot chocolate. We're at the uh, Clattering, Clattering Shore Dam was uh, constructed by the Galloway Water Tower Company in 1932 to 1934. Right, so, hot chocolate. Kettle's on. Hot chocolate's going in the mugs. Just three heaped teaspoons. Three heaped teaspoons. Ooh, ooh, that's a lot of chocolate. I normally have a very good sense of direction. Um, I can tell without seeing the sun or that. I, I know whether I'm going north, east, south. But there are a few places in the world that I've come across. And when I get in those areas, I completely lose it. And uh, there's one in the West Midlands where I used to go to quite a lot of my business work. And once I got into that triangle, I was hoping it was hopeless. I didn't know which way I was going. And back here, now, when we were near that lock, um, I was completely disorientated. We are heading down to this uh, Isle of Whitthorn, and when I looked at the map, and then I looked at the lake, or the reservoir, it was on the wrong side of the road. And I, when I really looked at it hard, and I worked it out, it was me, I was, I'd got it completely the wrong way around. I, to, to lose that sense of direction for me is horrible. This bit of road reminds me of that little rhyme, slightly changed words, 
The Rolling Scottish Road was made by the Rolling Scottish Drunkard. The way he, the day he went to Liverpool, by way of John O'Groats. Headed down to the Isle of Whithorn, and that uh, water you can see there uh, is uh, the River Cree. Yeah. It's the Isle of Whithorn. I don't know whether it is really an island, but uh, it does look like it at the moment. It looks more like a peninsula. This is Main Street. Harbour Road. It's called Harbour Road. I suppose it's quite an apt name for it, isn't it, really? Well, I don't know what Mandy's going to think, but if we can find somewhere to stop here for the night, I wouldn't mind. I think it's quite nice. There's a car park at the end. According to what we've read, uh, you can stop overnight in the car park. And this is it. It doesn't look very promising. Very steep. And it is. Just a muddy field. Not very inviting at all, is it, really? And what are we going to do? If those bands were parked there, we could park there, I suppose. Well, the description was absolutely right. Muddy field. Well, I yes, I, I, what we could do yes. Should we try it? I don't see why not. It really is a pretty little place, and we were looking forward to having a a night here, had a wander around, took in the uh, Yacht Club building and well, a few of the other sites and then we had a, a meal in that place, it was interesting and good prices as well, and then a, a drink in the Steam Packet Inn. So we met a lady called Ruth, but before I mention her again, I was pretty intrigued by this anchor which is a memorial to the crew of an SS Woodburn. And on its flute, it had a swastika. Now, Woodburn doesn't sound like a German word, so what was the swastika going, doing there? And many of you are going to say, oh, you should have known that, but I didn't. When the lines are vertical and horizontal, it's a sign of good things, peace. It's an old ancient religious sign but Hitler turned it 45 degrees and it became the symbol of the Nazis. I really, really like the, the look of this little village and we wanted to stop here the night but the one place that they allowed overnight stopping and camping was just a mad, muddy paddock and it was no no chance so we asked around and eventually found uh, a lady who obviously had some standing in the in the village and she said it was perfectly all right to park in the car park at the end of the road which is where we were so uh, we thought well that would be great uh, but she also said that there was a fairly strong likelihood that a chap in a green, uh, sorry, a blue car uh, would come and make trouble. And it was likely that uh, he'd turn up around about 11 o'clock at night, park alongside and 
sit on his horn. Uh, so we thought, okay, well, we'll take, take a chance on that. Now, <clears throat> I've been coming to Scotland since 1960. That's what, 60, 64 years was the first time I visited Scotland and I have been here m many, many times since then. I've owned a business here, or a couple of businesses here. Uh, I've never had any trouble. Uh, the people have been absolutely lovely. I've gone on with everybody and I've thoroughly enjoyed my time. I have my boat here. I bought my boat in Scotland. I kept it in Scotland for uh, three years, I think it was. And today or tonight turned out to be the exception to the rule. Um, we were greeted by, or when we got back to the van, we were greeted by a chap in a blue car. And he started rabbiting on, rabbiting on. And we told him that we had got permission from Ruth, was her name. And apparently he, somebody of his is related to this Ruth. <coughs> but it didn't seem to make any difference at all. And later on, um, another camper van, another motorhome turned up with three lads in from the Netherlands. Nice lads. And we were telling them uh, what we had been told. Um, and while we were talking to them, this chap turned up another bloke, not in the in the blue van, in the blue car, um, but in a, he, he was also causing a lot of trouble. And I couldn't believe it. I, I, I nicknamed him the Grim Reaper. And you can probably see why. And Mandy caught this little bit of uh, video of our confrontation. Do you, do you want me to call the police now? Do you want me to call the police? Because no, you're oh, please, you're please do. You're accusing carry me. On, carry on. You're accusing me of something. Get in there. Get in there. You're accusing me of something. I'm on holiday here at all. But I didn't see why I should pay 30, 30 pound up the road. It's just some people free road and good here. I don't know here. It's, it's not me, it comes to you or even a clock. We're going to figure out the plan. Thank you. Very okay. Good. Thank you too. Uh, well, I don't know what happened to the three lads from the Netherlands. I don't know whether they stayed on or not, but we decided to move on. Um, I just don't like confrontation. I don't like the stress. I'm getting a bit too old for it anyway. So we moved on, which is a terrible shame because we had booked a a table for dinner uh, in the pub. We'd arranged to have breakfast in the pub and we would have gone down there this evening and, and, and had um, drinks down there. And that chap cost the local businesses money. I know it, it, we wouldn't have spent a fortune, but it's out of season and they would have gained something. Now this chap is not doing the local people any favours whatsoever. He's just mean and um, I think a little bit crazy. Well, after our experience with the, the Grim Reaper at uh, the Isle of Whithorn, uh, <laughs> we moved away uh, to save all the hassle. And we found uh, what would appear to be an extremely good uh, campsite. Um, and uh, we arrived a bit late. So for dinner, we're having, would you believe, macaroni cheese with... Chestnut mushrooms. Chestnut mushrooms? Yeah, but not just normal chestnut. I got the chestnut mushrooms and fried them off in olive oil with Himalayan salt and black pepper, freshly ground, and then threw in two tins of macaroni cheese. <laughs> oh, there so, you are. Gourmet. So we're having gourmet. A, a gourmet uh, macaroni cheese with 
a rather red and rather warm Chianti. Chianti. Is it Chianti or Chianti? It, it says Chianti on there. <laughs> Cheers. Let's ask an Italian. <laughs> I think it's Chianti. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. It's really nice and you can get it from Aldi's. It's beautiful. The adventure will continue. Thanks for watching this episode. Please subscribe and come back for more. Bye for now.